Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Anderson, and I'm happy to be with you today to tell you about my day with Kraft. Uh, I'm an IT director in higher ed in the U.S. by day, uh, and on the side, I'm co-host of the Basic AF Show podcast that I do with my friend Jeff Battersby, and I also write and publish the Apple Talk newsletter. Uh, both of those are very Apple-centric, tech-centric, uh, and so I use Kraft to uh, manage pretty much everything I do at work. Uh, home and in these projects. And so what I wanted to share with you today uh, is how I'm uh, really doing the, the side projects. I, I can't show you too much with work for confidentiality purposes or reasons, but uh, I can show you my stuff. And one of the things I really like about Craft is that it is very flexible and I'm able to split the content out into separate spaces, which are organizational containers. Uh, and I can show you those really quickly. So you can see I've got a my space here, uh, and then my workspace, family stuff and everything like that. And so that's nice because that keeps work items out of sight when I'm at home and it keeps personal stuff out of sight when I'm working. Um, and I find that's very handy. Uh, but like I mentioned, what I wanted to focus on with you today is uh, the, the work that I'm doing around the podcast and the newsletter and how I'm managing all of that in craft. And so everything runs through this document that we're looking at here. So I named it Content HQ. Uh, and one of the nice things with craft is the way that, um, documents are not really flat. So, and some note taking applications, a note is a note and that's as far as it can go. Uh, but with craft, uh, you have the ability to nest, uh, sub pages and bits of information inside of the note. Uh, and that's really makes it flexible and powerful and helps keep things nicely organized. And here in uh, Content HQ, uh, I've started to take advantage of collections, which is kind of a lightweight database. And that is relatively new to Craft. Uh, it came out late last year, early this year. Uh, and so you can see here, I've got my content planning collection. And inside of this, I've got it broken down across the top uh, by category. And so you can see I've got podcast, newsletter, YouTube. Uh, I can filter everything by date, by channel. So if I were to look at it this way, you can see I've got all of my podcast episodes uh, in view. Uh, if I scroll down farther, you'd see the newsletters and everything, but I can also filter. Maybe I just want to see what's coming up in my newsletters. And so you can see I've got this uh, number four, episode 47 coming up. And if I scroll across, you can see all of these custom fields that contain metadata about that particular item. And I'll show you that in more detail in a minute. Um, down below, I've got some of the supporting uh, information for uh, my publishing. So I've got uh, AI assistance, notes on those, research that I'm doing, metrics that I'm capturing. And all of these are uh, subpages, and I've got them set up as cards. Uh, I like the cards. I think visually they're more interesting and they convey more of what the uh, information down below is. Um, and so if we were to go into, say, the greenhouse, which is kind of my idea of, you know, my ideas that I'm working on, you can see I've got uh, some additional cards here. And then if you click down uh, even further, there are sub pages under those as well. Cards are really easy to create. Uh, in fact, most anything in craft is easy to create um, using uh, slash commands, which are super handy. Uh, so if you're not familiar with those, you would simply type a slash and then you can see a list of uh, features comes up or, or tools built inside of craft. And you can see that uh, you can choose from those, but you can also just simply type. So if I wanted to add a new card, I would just type card and you can see it filters the list. And then at that point, I would just hit enter and then I can choose the type, uh, the type of style that I want for the card. I can do a wider format. I can do a square. Uh, but what's really nice is you can decorate these in a multitude of ways. You can add a custom background um, if you want to add your own photos or maybe just some you know, different types of elements just to spruce them up. Uh, and they look really nice that way. And as you can see, you can have multiple uh, components on a page. It doesn't, you're not limited really. Uh, so you can see, for example, I've got another collection uh, a little bit further down the page where I'm capturing topics that I'm working on. And again, I've got some metadata uh, for those around, you know, where they might be in the pipeline. Is it just an idea? Am I actually working on it? Am I planning that particular item? 
uh, whatever the situation may be. I've got links to all of my different uh, things that I do. So my podcast, my newsletter, uh, YouTube um, as well, and then some published content. I'll show you in a few moments. And then, of course, you can link uh, you can out to other pages or websites. Uh, again, going back to just how flexible and, and powerful the application is. So why don't we walk through uh, setting up a new podcast episode uh, so you can see how that works. Uh, and maybe that will give you some ideas for uh, ways that you might implement some of these items as well. So to add a, a new document or a new note for uh, a podcast episode, I would just click down here at the bottom. Uh, we'll just call it test for now. Uh, and then as of right now, there's no information for this episode. It's just, you know, just has a title. And then if we click the arrow, though, a new page will open up and you can see all of the custom fields that I've added for the page. So I've got recording date, publish date, who the guests may be, um, the seven day delivery things that you see here or seven day items are related to the newsletter. I capture those and I use a similar template for that. Um, but something that is incredibly helpful uh, with craft and it's something that i didn't really take advantage of for a while are templates uh craft has hundreds up on their website or you can roll your own and so i finally got into this uh recently because i kept creating the same documents over and over and so i thought well let's look at the templates and so to add a template uh just like we talked earlier slash command super powerful and helpful so if you do slash and then just type out temp you can see insert from template. And so when that comes up, uh, you'll see the ones that craft provides. Uh, you can choose from those if you want, but any templates that you've made uh, show up here at the top. So if we scroll over a little bit, we will see this is a new podcast template, gives you a preview, and then you just choose to insert template. And what does that do? Well, really depends on what you put it in or what you put into the template. But for me, really handy because I use a checklist uh, for recording our show that has steps that I do every time we record. Uh, but this makes it really easy to be consistent, not miss steps. I love checklists. Uh, they're really helpful for making sure everything goes off without a hitch. And so you can see it's put all of that information right into the note. Uh, I added that in a toggle, which is another styling element in craft that's really handy so you can hide that with one click which is kind of nice and then if you look down below i've got my episode title uh description i can put all of those in steps to process the transcript uh social media posts and then kind of my posting schedule if you will um recently tasks came to craft uh this year it's been a big year for uh updates for craft if you haven't uh followed closely to what they're so you can see I've got a list of tasks here. Uh, and then if I want to schedule any of these, I can say, okay, let's click the dots here. And then a nice little calendar comes up. I can choose the date. I can set a reminder. So I get a proper reminder for it. And I can also choose if I want it to be a repeating task or not. Um, so really helpful. And I, in fact, I've kind of moved all of my task management over to craft. I've been using things for a long time, which is still a really nice app, but I love having my to-do list together with my notes because a lot of times I'll be working on a task. So say I've got uh, some notes I want to take for this particular item here. If I click the arrow, it will actually open up another page for that task. And then I can work, take notes on whatever it is I'm doing related to that task. And then I've got that in the history, or maybe I can't finish it all in one day. And so I've just got a nice uh, bit of notes there for the progress that I've made uh, so far. All right. And so that gives you an idea of uh, everything that is in a, a template for the podcast episode. You can see further below, I've got some instructions or uh, directions, notes I've taken on the editing process and everything. And again, all in that template. So really, really powerful uh, and a nice way to kind of quickly uh, get things going without having to copy and paste a bunch of information or manually type it in, which would be way worse. Uh, so a very nice feature. Uh, and, and quickly, just to show you the the newsletters is basically the same kind of a process. I would come in here and I would say next send, for example. And then if we click the arrow, come into a new page, you can see because it's in the same 
uh, collection. It has all of the same custom fields. And then again, I would just come in, insert from template, uh, and then I would come to the newsletter template and then insert that. And you can see again, other checklist, really excited about checklists. Um, but this one's broken down a little bit differently. And so you can see I've got an area for my subject or headline, my main content. Uh, I usually include information about the podcast in each episode. So I've got that laid out. So it's ready to go. And then I'm collecting links throughout the week or two leading up to when I send it. I send this every two weeks. And so I can just drop my links right in there. And then when it's time to finish it up, I can go through the links, pick the best ones, add them, finish all the writing, and then I move it over to my um, email platform that I use. So really, really flexible, really, really powerful. Okay, so that's a quick walkthrough of how I'm uh, handling publishing my newsletter, my podcast, uh, all of the writing and research and planning that I do, uh, all using craft and using uh, collections and tasks, templates, cards, uh, so many features in craft that make it really easy to do this. It's easy to make it uh, consistent uh, and, and just fun to use. And it works across all of my Apple devices. So it's on Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS. And I love that because no matter where I'm at, I can always you know jump right into something. If I've got an idea, I've always got it with me. So that's really great. Uh, last thing I want to look at, and it's just really quickly, uh, is publishing content. Uh, this is something Crafts offered for a while uh, that I had not taken advantage of either. And so last year, I put together this guide for college students who were unsure what Mac they wanted to get for school. Uh, I was seeing that question asked on social media and everything. And that's kind of what I do in my day job. So, so I thought, well, I'll put something together. And I wrote it in Craft, put it on a different platform. Uh, and then this year, when it came time to update it, I thought, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense uh, to publish it elsewhere. Let's try publishing it through Craft. And so I did. Uh, and again, this is the offline version we're looking at, but I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Uh, and so as you look through, I mean, really easy to add these links to the page. They are active. So if you click the link, it jumps down to the other section of the page. Uh, layout, everything looks really nice. I'm able to put images in all the formatting and that is you know kind of a big thing with craft is it's really easy to make very pleasant looking documents so it was nice uh writing experience i was able to get this put together very quickly and then to share it really straightforward you just go up to the share button in the upper right click publish there's a publish to the web section and when you choose or click on create link, then you can see some of the options that you have here. Uh, you can use your custom URL uh, as you can give it a, a specific link rather than just a long box of, or a long block of characters and numbers, those types of things. You can password protect it if you want to. Uh, again, nice, easy, one-click publishing. It does give you some analytics. So after you've published it and the site's been online for a while, you can go back and look, see how many people have actually looked at the site. I'm not going to publish this one, so we'll take that off. And that's it. And let's take a look at it quickly, how it looks in Safari. So you can see almost identical to how it looks in Craft. Uh, there's a comment section if a reader wants to leave a comment, but everything publishes just how it looked in the document. So that's really nice, really simple. Uh, and really easy to do. And so that wraps it up. That's how I'm using Craft. That's my day with Craft. Uh, thanks for spending a few minutes with me today, and I hope this was helpful.